Hello Libra. Welcome to the channel. This is Asnoinche here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level, what it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. So some of you may have been in a relationship in the past. This could also be a current relationship. For others of you, this could be a situationship that you find yourselves in. For a small portion of you, this could be someone that you've met, you have a whole lot of connection with, but no one's really speaking up. Why? Because there's a whole lot of sexual chemistry. For those of you who are new, my method of reading is just slightly different. I do have the ability of channeling through my higher intuitive self to get the answers that I need. I do not channel through any spirit guides. I never have. And I have certain reasons for that. At the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, as well as Uriel to provide you with some advice based on what comes up today. You do have love here. Peekaboo card. Wow. Libra, I have not seen a reading this positive, I think, in forever. This is not just your sign. This is in general. Every single card here, except one, which I would literally just say is like half the power of something that's negative. Um, they are all very, very positive here. You got a great reading. This means that things have progressed from before, things are starting to change, the mood is starting to change. Here we have hearth and home, justice, growth, nourishment, sexuality, power, surrender, mothering, love. Under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme, we have abundance. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Libra, the connection that I have with you, it feels like family. You are my home. Wherever you are, that is where my home is. You are my hearth and home. I can talk to you and confide in you and not fear that you are going to judge me. I feel that in this connection, you are that one person who can guide me on the right path. And you have done this in the past. You are that light that guides me home. And you are also that light that shines bright but also is able to keep me warm. You are so many things to me. And I am grateful to have you in my life. There's a part of me that just melts when I see you, when I think of you. Because of the type of love I have for you now. I feel as if you are my family. But I need to make things right. I want to make things right. Everything that happened before, there was not an equal give and take. I just kept taking and taking, and you just kept giving and giving. No, it's not right. And this is why I realize now that it's time for me to move on. It's time for me to finally make things equal and finally make things right. What I also feel is that in this connection, you and I, we moved into this connection very fast. Everything happened oh so suddenly, a little too fast. So fast that I was unable to get to know you. And that, that's not your fault. 
That's all on me because I should have been paying attention to who you were, what you were, your dreams, your ambitions, far into the future and what you were like in your past. Did I really get to know you? No. I was only, only focused. I was only focused on the physical aspect of this connection. The physical aspect, how gorgeous your body is, how I could not take my mind off of that, how I was obsessing over that, and everything that would happen was just a sense of infatuation. There was no connection that I added. It was distant, I was cold, and I didn't really want to know you. Even if I acted like I wanted to, I never absorbed it. I never truly appreciated or valued your presence in my life. I took you for granted. I realize that now. Going forward, I want to grow with you. I want to get to know you more. What you were like when you were young. And what are your dreams and your plans far into the future? I want to know all of that. I have found in you now the perfect mate, the perfect partner. Emotionally, spiritually, physically, you are that person who can fulfill every need, every desire. You're perfect for me. This is something that I have seen and realized. This is something that I know. It wasn't like this before. There's no doubt I am extremely sexually attracted to you. You are amazing. Every part of you is amazing. You make my body melt. My heart races a bit faster. My palms get a little sweaty when I think about you and I want to be with you. I want to be lying next to you. I want to be intimate with you. Because I have been in the past obsessing over you. And I almost felt addicted to this body that you have. But I know now it's beyond the body. You are very powerful. Sometimes there is a little bit of dominance that comes from your side. But I do admire that. The problem is. I feel sometimes emotionally vulnerable and weak in the knees. Sometimes this is a problem, I think of it as a weakness, but I'm willing to surrender to that. I see that you are somebody who is very powerful and you have the sense of temptation. You are temptation. You define temptation. You don't even have to do anything and I'm tempted. You don't even have to seduce. I feel that in this connection you are this one individual who can truly make me feel amazing. I've surrendered to you, my mind, my heart, my body. I also feel that now in this connection there's a sense of belonging or finally, I belong to you, and you belong to me. I never viewed this connection like that before, but now I do. I also have realized that you were somebody who was very nurturing, caring, protecting, and loving. You will protect. And the love that you have for those that you do love. It is unconditional love. No matter what the faults are. By default, you have this gentle way. And you love. How could I have hurt someone like this? 
I know the things that I've done in the past have been very wrong. I've hurt you and I've broken you, but a part of me now wants to make things right. Why? Because I am so deeply in love with you. My heart belongs to you now. You can do whatever you want with it, but I hope you don't crush it. Where was I when you needed me? I know I was not doing the right thing. I was not in the right state of mind either. But now I want to be that person who can be there for you. I want to be that person where you and I can work like a team. I also feel that in this connection, there is a sense of love. You define love. I have unconditional love for you. This love that I feel for you now is very sacred. It's pure. It's true. It's even ancient. I don't know where it comes from, but I know it's very intense. I also feel that in this connection, you and I could make a great power couple. We could work together and change the world. The sense of abundance that exists, I also feel sometimes that money is a problem. It could be a problem. But I want to be that person who can make things happen for the both of us. And materialistic gain and wealth, I still feel that is very important. For now, there's a part of me that's realizing that you are my family and I have to start treating you differently because now I realize that you are someone that I want to spend the rest of my life with and I need to make things right in order to move forward in this connection. All right, Libra. Very interesting. So different from any of the readings that I've done, especially during this upload. It is beautiful. It is very positive. It's as if this person has gone through the dark night of the soul, maybe even yourself, but they have been through a few things, obstacles, even their thought process, their mindset has changed. And they are very positive towards you towards the type of future that could possibly come from this connection. It is a beautiful reading. I love it. 10 out of 10. Very nice. Now, <clears throat> these are the current feelings and emotions. Please keep that in mind. So this is the current status of your person of interest. Here with this deck, this is the Lover's Path Tarot. So what I like to do with this deck is I go a little bit into the past to see what happened in the first place. Now, in all honesty, with the type of cards we had, you don't even need to go to the past because that is the current status, perfectly A1. Um, they're on the right path. But for some of you, because it is a general love reading, it may not resonate uh, for you that much right now. Maybe this person hasn't got to that stage yet, the first set of cards I just read. So here, I read these in the reverse to give you a better understanding as to what happened in the past. In any case, um, things were going great, but then something did go downhill. It didn't work out. What was the reason behind that? Some of you may know, and some of you may not know. So this is for those of you that want some closure. You want to know why certain things happened. The reason... This person could have ghosted you. They may have just faded. They may have discontinued the communication that they used to have with you. Perhaps they used to communicate a lot, but then something happened. So here we are going a little bit into the past, which at this time may not be applicable for, applicable for the majority of you because the first set of cards, that's this current status, and that is like A1, like two thumbs up for that. Those are really, really good cards. That is this person's mindset right now, so they're like on track. They really want to be with you. This is for those of you 
that may still be struggling and really want to have that sense of understanding, like what happened back then that caused this problem in the first place. We have here the Four of Cups and the Queen of Coins. Let's have a look at the Four of Cups first. All right. So the Four of Cups here, and I read this in the reverse, it talks about dissatisfaction, overindulgence, and even boredom to a certain degree. Here, this person had started taking you for granted. Yeah, this is what I mentioned before, taking you for granted, no value. They took your love, your talents, your beauty for granted, and they needed a more authentic way of life. They started to reevaluate the relationship because at some point in time, the relationship itself felt superficial. Here we also have, they wanted to accept the situation the way that it was, even though discontent was still present, they felt that this was a passing phase. So during that time, Libra, when things did not work out between the both of you, they truly were taking you for granted, okay? They just did not value you. And what they were feeling was that, <clears throat> to some degree, things were very superficial and artificial and not authentic in this connection. For that reason, they wanted to reevaluate the relationship because it felt superficial. Now, why did it feel superficial? It could be that you gave them all the love. However, they just felt it wasn't enough. And they also felt that, hey, this is too good to be true. That also happens. Sometimes we are, suddenly we meet somebody and you can't really find any faults in them. And you wonder like, wow, is this too good to be true? <laughs> you pinch yourself and you're wondering, is this even happening? There's obviously everybody that has something, right? There's something always wrong. But if you meet somebody and you feel that the majority of the time you can really get along with them and, you know, sometimes you can move in with them, sometimes you don't have to move in with them. You just, you just know. Um, and it's because of the certain actions, interactions, reactions that they have. You can judge a person like that too. The issue here is that your person of interest at that point in time in the past they felt this was so good to be true that they felt everything was fake and they were just taking it for granted because they thought, nah, you know what? This is not going to work out. Probably they're just acting. They actually felt superficial. They themselves were acting while you were truly giving them yourself and your love and your affection and your time, energy, and effort. You were doing this, but they were not. Simply because it was too good to be true for them. Here we also have Queen of Coins. Let's have a look. All right, we have here the Queen of Coins. This talks about how at some point in time, your person of interest did not believe in prosperity or harmony. There was a lack of fertility. There was also a lack of loyalty, warmth, and affection, and even love. Now, fertility doesn't mean actual fertility. It could be, but it also means just having that growth, right? Not really wanting to grow not really feeling that one can grow due to the circumstances that they're in. There was a lack of loyalty, warmth and affection and even love. We have here a situation need to ground oneself in over materialistic orientation to life and disappointments in the home. Interesting right there. Abundance. Materialistic. I did mention that. I did say the word materialistic in the beginning here. It was under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme, which was right here before we just came to this one. Very interesting. You're talking about money here. <clears throat> Your person of interest may have been somebody that was focused on money. Either they had a lot of it or they didn't have any. Either way, they felt that materialistic gain and resources, they felt it is important. And there's no doubt about that. Money is important. Here, back in the day, your person of interest was a little too much. They were over materialistic, okay? Now, the current status, which is what we had before, yes, there is abundance and it is the overall arching theme. For some of you, that might be a problem. For others of you, it might just be okay. Maybe they just, they love you so much now that they just want to earn and they want to make your life and theirs comfortable as possible. There's no harm in that. But for some of you, this could still be a problem where you may be more spiritual and this person may be very 
materialistic and tangible, everything they need to buy. It has to be super, you know, brand name or super expensive or they need to show off. That's something that the both of you may need to deal with. But these are two people with completely different personalities. So a compromise, that is what would be the best thing to do in that type of a situation. So you are dealing with somebody here who in the past was very materialistic. And I also felt that this connection was superficial. And that really does um, <clears throat> explain a lot of things. So materialistic in the sense here, you're dealing with somebody who knows that there was love, there was affection in this connection. However, did they even believe it? Why? Because materialistically, they think of things as a trade and commerce. Okay? They don't think of things that it's selfless love. Their mindset is so different that if you're going to give something to somebody, somebody else will expect something in return. That is what this person's mindset was like. But now it's slightly changed. Not all of it, but it's slightly changed. This is something that your person of interest was feeling back in the day because their mindset was completely different. Some of them or some of their thoughts and their beliefs may still be the same. But when it comes to the intimacy side, the emotional side, seeing how much love you have, they are, they just melt. Okay. It's literally goo goo gaga. Like they really do melt for you. They do have these feelings and emotions for you. It's just a matter of you taking a step back and seeing the broader picture. Is it okay with you? Are you okay with this person either not having that much money or maybe having too much money? Right? There's a lot of people I know that <laughs> there's one person I used to work with and she said, well, that person's rich. What kind of problems do they have? I was like, wow, wow. Some people are very short-sighted, they're very narrow-minded, and they only think that if you're poor and you got problems, nope. The richer you get, sometimes it's like the more problems you have. Some of the happiest people you'll see in villages, in third world, second world countries, they're happy. Even if they're poor, they make it happy. They deal with the circumstances. They know stuff happens, but... There's also that sense of being mindful and enjoying the moment when you have it because you, that moment's not going to come again. So there's no use worrying during that time. Here we have a situation where you have two people that are slightly different and their opinions are different. What needs to happen now is the word I'm seeing in my mind's eyes, compromise. Okay, let's have a look at the beginner's tarot. So <clears throat> this is for those of you that want to know any actions, any plans, any intentions your person of interest may have. <clears throat> okay. All right. So for a tiny portion of you, this person could be, and you both could be in a third party situation where you have either a person in your life that's causing some type of restriction, third person, or this could be the, um, some type of an organization or some type of an institute that this person is with or the beliefs related system that they are unable to, um, I don't know why I'm getting the word eject, but eject from. So like they do want to escape it, but they're unable to escape it. Here we have... Queen of Cups. First card is the strongest. Beautiful card. This, once again, reminds me of the first set of cards you just had, where you had nourishment. You had mothering. Those are very nurturing and beautiful, soft, gentle qualities that this person sees in you. Now, some of you are also male who are hearing this recording. So even you have the feminine energy in you. We have here a person who appreciates you, and who loves you based on the way you love them. They have this understanding that you are someone who has unconditional love, a bounty, 
bountiful, if there's such a word, I think. Um, there is. I hope I'm using it correctly. But this person feels that, let's use the word abundance, okay? Um, they feel that there's abundant love that comes from you. And it is very soft, very gentle, very forgiving. One of the issues here is when you have that sort of an impression on somebody, and if you don't really know them that well, even if you know them, they do take you for granted because they know, well, you know what, I can do whatever I want and they're still going to forgive me. They're still going to take me back. That becomes a problem because at some point in time, they don't value and they're not afraid of losing you anymore. And that is a problem. Here we also have the four of cups. They're waiting to see what you do, how you're going to react. Are you going to reach out to them? They're waiting to see this because from their point of view right now, they truly do feel bored. They feel at a distance. They feel that somehow they've been rejected, but it's also on their part. They haven't been taking the opportunities or taking advantage of opportunities that had come to them. Things could have worked out for them, but they refused. They were not truly interested in moving forward um, at that time or even now. There's a part of them that feels held back. The issue with this is that they're not noticing the opportunity that can exist in terms of the positive energy around them that is allowing them to see the three of cups that are right in front of them. There could be a reconciliation in this connection, but they're so, I'm literally getting bored, bored out of their mind, depressed, and even I'm getting the word stagnation. They're kind of like stuck. They're not able to see beyond that. So certain things have happened in this connection that have really made this person um, evaluate and reevaluate who they were, what they did, why they did what they did, and they're not able to move forward with it because they're just dwelling on the past. This is a problem in this connection because they have not been able to push that aside and actually move forward in this connection with you the way that you would like them to. Not only that, but then we also have a four of swords. <clears throat> they realize that they had caused you heartache, pain, suffering, sorrow. Somebody here felt very debilitated. They couldn't move on. It was hurting a lot to the point where it hurt them mentally and physically even. This person, whoever this is out there, Libra, maybe you, um, somebody here has felt that. And here, your person of interest has realized the amount of hurt and uh, the pain and the suffering that you've gone through. So now they've taken a step back and they've retreated, but not not in a good way, you know, in terms of retreating and they're having fun. No, they're literally trying to heal from the heartache and pain that they caused you. And so this makes them understand that, you know, I'm not a good human being. I actually caused so much heartache and pain to this Libra. I don't know how to handle it. I don't know how to live with myself. And so you have this person retreating, trying to heal, trying to go over what has happened, what they've put you through. And one day, when they do escape from that, and they finally resurrect from this, they will be a changed person because at that point they would have learned their lesson and gained some wisdom while they're in isolation. Not talking to you, not talking to anybody. Here we also have somebody who's super immature, maybe even inexperienced, but I'm seeing here the fool card. So you don't have a knight, you don't have a page, you don't have, you have a queen, but that is representing you, I'm seeing. But this fool card represents them taking an approach towards you, which is great. But the problem is, the type of approach is very immature. They do not know how to plan, how to keep a promise, how to be maybe even faithful for some of you. Here we're dealing with somebody who's very rash, abrupt, aggressive, compulsive, impulsive, even. You're dealing with somebody who takes action first and thinks later, and that is a problem. When that happens, it does appear that in this connection, 
this person wants to move on. They want to be that individual who can actually um, excel in life. They they can move forward, but the type of actions that they take, they don't really think about what the future will hold or what it will be. They kind of rush into things, and that is a problem. When they rush into things, it causes an issue because with that, they don't know what the outcome will be. They're just not even thinking. So in this situation, Libra, if this person reaches out to you, I would recommend taking a step back and you being the leader in this connection, you lead the connection because you seem to be a bit more wiser than this person. This connection may finish as soon as it had started if this person is in charge. So let this person come to you and then you take the baton and you lead the way, okay? And you keep that baton because this person clearly is somebody who is immature and irresponsible even. They have a lot of passion, but they don't know how to execute that passion in a very mature kind of way. They do not have that wisdom. Here we also have the Eight of Swords. <clears throat> the overall arching theme this entire reading right now. Um, it's this person feels bound. They feel trapped. This could be because of internal circumstances or external circumstances, which means other people. They feel they cannot see. They're not supposed to see. This is what they're feeling. They cannot see. They cannot hear. Their arms, legs, feet, hands are tied. They're bound. They cannot move. On top of that, we have them surrounded by swords, caged, feeling caged. In the far distance, somebody's watching them like a hawk. So what's happening? Does this person have that ability to move on? They want to, but something or someone is blocking them from doing that. They have ambition, they have goals, but they feel trapped and they feel bound and they feel as if they are the victim. Whatever has happened, they feel victimized here. They don't feel that they have the freedom. They want to move on, but they're stuck. And when they're stuck in this type of a situation, it is very difficult for them to reach out and be with you the way that you want them to, because whatever circumstances they're stuck in, they cannot let go of that and they cannot escape that. So here in this connection right now, I'm seeing that it's important for you to be that person when this person comes into your life, you be that person that takes the lead. Because you're the one here that appears to be much wiser than this person. All right. Let's have a look at what the angels have to say about this. <clears throat> Just going to do a quick prayer. All right, these messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel. First card is the strongest. Remain positive. Second, we have here improving health. So this is a situation where some of you, it has uh, affected your physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. We also have here weight. Followed by romance spiritually based romantic connection <clears throat> we also have here no need to worry all right helpful people i just forgot if i actually announced it but i will announce it again just in case i missed it so these messages are brought to you by archangels michael raphael gabriel and uriel Ooh. hmm <clears throat> We 
We have here no. It was under the bottom of the deck. Nope. Okay. Meditation brings answers. So we have a situation here. They are saying here to remain positive. There are certain things that you have been going through, and it is extremely difficult to stay positive, but as long as you remain positive, you will be able to attract positive energy. Now, by not remaining positive, there's been a lot of things that have happened, and I know it's hard to remain positive when your life is just in turmoil. That's just life, right? Um, some of you have actually gone through a few things on a physical level here, because it says here improving health. And for me, that shows that there's a misalignment here between your mind, body, spirit, and your soul. I will get to that card and tell you that I um, what type of reading you can do. Um, you can place an order, and I'll tell you about that a little later. But I do have something for that. <clears throat> it is important for you not to rush, but here, to be patient and to wait. What they're telling you to wait for is this realization and this opening in the heavens that's going to occur. This realization is going to dawn upon them and you. This is a spiritually based romantic connection. You may already feel this, but they haven't felt that yet. Um, because truly, I did not see any sort of spiritual cards in the beginning, um, in the first reading that we just did, in the first set of cards. I did not see spiritual connection there. Um, there's slightly with the nourishment, but you could have had the other four cards that I usually have in this reading. You didn't get that. So it also means that this person is um, emotionally and physically connected to you, but that sense of spiritual connection has not truly, um, I'm getting the word, erupted yet. It has not come to the surface yet. Bloomed. I'm seeing a flower blooming to the surface so you can finally see it. Um, it has not happened in their life yet. They have not realized that part. Here we also have, with the romance card, um, the sense that you may be soulmates, twin flames, karmic partners. And I'll go over that card as well in the end, <clears throat> because I have a package for that and also some videos on my other channel, Asnoincha Audio. Here they're also saying to, there's no need to worry. Now one thing is, remember, with worry you can also attract negative energy. So they're trying to tell you here to sit back, remain calm, wait, and there's no need to worry because things eventually will work out. Here we have do trust. There's no need to worry. Do trust in the divine's plan. This is God's plan. God has a plan for you. And it's a whole different story when I talk about God. So God does have the masculine and feminine energy. Um, it prefers being in the masculine state as more of the confident um, being, the leader, the go-getter, uh, the one that initiates. So that's why when we say God, it's typically like a he. And uh, and this is just a supreme being, right? The, the one and only in our particular uh, universe that we have. The holy light of God, if you're going to call upon um, God, do always talk about the holy light of God. Now, this is very interesting. You have here helpful people, and then under the bottom of the deck you had no, but I intuitively felt that this is their, this is what they wanted. And we also have, once again, meditation brings answers when you connect to the divine. This is a problem. Okay. Okay, let's let's rephrase that. What's good about this is that if you connect in this sense, in the mind, the trust that you have towards God, towards this meditation, this could be the Christ consciousness even, Jesus. Uh, this could be the source, the holy light of God. Meditation will bring you answers. So they're telling here you to here to connect to the angels and connect to God in order to get those intuitive answers that you need. Why is this important? Because they're telling you that there are some people that you may think who are helpful, but no, they are not. Isn't that a shocker? So there's some people in your friends, your family, your co-workers, whoever it is. There's some people out there that you may be getting advice from, that you may be telling your issues to. And you have no idea that they're stabbing you in the back. They don't have your best interest at heart. Here the angels are clearly saying helpful people. Nope. No, they're not helpful. The type of people that you're connecting with, you need to be extremely careful who you're talking to. 
If you know they've been around forever and they, you know, they truly love you and you know it, you feel it, that's fine. But if you even get a, like an inkling of jealousy, it's best for you just to take a step back and do not talk to them about your plans, about anything related to your love life, your career, please, because they give you the evil eye. And then this sort of nonsense happens where we start getting sick. And this is on a spiritual uh, plane. This is like spiritual warfare that happens. They don't even know sometimes that they're doing this, but some people do deliberately do it. Here, <clears throat> meditation brings answers. So some of you have been so busy and not feeling so great. Um, you've taken a step back and you just don't have time, right? And sometimes it's like we just give up. Um, here, the angels are telling you that it's important for you to keep on track. 21 minutes minimum meditation, two to three minutes minimum, a prayer. Make it real, understand that it's there, that it's already there. And know that whoever you're praying to here, they actually listen to you, right? So when you do pray to God, always remember to say the holy light of God, holy, is a very key word, because in the universe, there's a lot of lights, and they're not all holy. So <clears throat> do be very careful of people who might be stabbing you behind your back. Because that is a reason why certain things may not be working out. You did have here this person being in the eight of swords type of situation scenario that they have. It's not good because um, it does appear that there are other people that are in the mix here <clears throat> that are what sheeps. Sheep, there's no plural, sheep in wolves clothing or something like that. A sheep disguised in a wolf's clothing. I think, I don't know how to say that phrase. I'm not good with phrases. Okay. <clears throat> I wanted to just go over this quickly with you guys because there's a couple of things here that seem to be quite important. So starting with this particular, um, these cards, improving health and remain positive, I do have a package on my website, www.asnoincia.com. In the rates and packages section, you will see, I have something called a holy light package, which is kind of just generic. That is a self-help guide. But because you got this issue here, improving health, which talks about your mind, body, spirit, and your soul not being in alignment, I do have a package to help you with that. And that's called the Chakra Checkup Package. So I have the ability of looking into where you dwell, where your home is. I can see negative energies, how many you have, as well as this is demons and evil spirits and even jinns. What you have, how many you have in your home, around your aura, and inside of your body, which are your actual chakra centers. And then I teach you how to remove them all. Yay! So you have a package for that, believe it or not. Been there, done that, over past two decades plus. I've been through a lot too. And that's why I ended up making it myself. You got something, you want something done, you got to do it yourself. I've spent thousands of bucks, oh my gosh, over my lifetime and trying to fix things. And it turns out that my method works and it's very good and it helps and it's not so expensive. If you feel that somebody's done black magic on you, witchcraft, a hex, this could even be voodoo. It could be that your home is haunted, hopefully not. If you feel there's poltergeist activities, if you feel there's something supernatural, if you're having sleep paralysis, if you're seeing shadow, anything, all that kind of nonsense, that package will get rid of it, okay? That's an all-in-one. That is either a holy light package, or if you want to get into details and a personalized reading, that is the chakra checkup package. And I feel the reason why I'm saying that is because you had a couple other cards where it says not only remain positive, but there was another one, no need to worry, right? There's something here that's, it's it's not just you and your circumstances, it's stuff that you don't see. And that is also something that is bringing you down, as well as the people that are jealous, as well as the obstacles that you're facing. So have a look at that. Um, place an order if you wish. Do read the description so that you can expect um, the type of reading that you want. So you'll know what to expect once you see that. Now, moving along 
to this particular card, romance, this is for those of you that may feel in this connection that this is a huge spiritually based connection. You find it difficult to let go of this person. You're finding that you're obsessing over this person. You feel a spiritual connection. You're unable to, well, not, okay, so you're unable to let go of them, but it's also because you feel like you're connected to them. It's like they're family. One of the issues with this feeling is that it is extremely difficult to let go. And even if you cut the cord, if you think you're cutting the cord, you can't really cut the cord because that is made from the divine. So this could be someone who is your twin flame soulmate or karmic partner. You could have been married in a past life. You could have been lovers. This could have been a uh, betrothal. You could have been um, or betrothed together. You could have been engaged. Could also be for a tiny portion of you, a future life situation that hasn't really occurred yet. Most of the time I do past life readings on a very rare occasion. I may have like the odd case where it's actually not in the past, but it's in the future that's going to happen like two or 300 years from now. But I have a, a package for that too, past life reading. The reason why I do that is because a lot of you right now are going through certain things and you're wondering why on earth has this happened to me? For that, I don't just look at this lifetime, but I look into your past life with this specific individual. And with that, I'm able to see the root cause of the problem back then that is affecting the both of you now. And that provides a lot of closure and it helps you understand things on a huge, like total different level. They are usually uh, very positive and happy readings, but sometimes, you know, life is not always happy. There are tragedies. Um, there are sometimes in the sense that it's not always a happily ever after type situation in the past life. Somebody literally may have been um, hurt in some way, physically, emotionally, spiritually even. So if that's something that you are interested in, I am doing past life readings still. Um, have a look again on my website and place an order. Please do read the description so you know what to expect. If it is out of stock, feel free to send me an email and I will put you on the waiting list for past life reading. Okay, so I wanted to tell you guys about this because it seemed very intense in this reading. Now, I also have here. Mm, okay, there's something I'm just getting. Um, Gabriel, okay, Archangel Gabriel is telling me here that people that are in love and people that are to be in love if god is love then the devil is the opposite and the devil does not want this to happen because the devil also knows that in the future this in your timeline is supposed to happen but it doesn't love love it's clever this is why it's important for you to get rid of that negative energy so that all that is owed to you karmically everything that is written in your book of life yes get that but if you have negative energies along the road, that path towards you, it will be blocked by these negative energies. So it's important to get rid of those. And that's why I have these packages so that you can at least receive what is owed to you karmically, whatever truly was written in your book of life, you can get that. I also have, I uh, just wanted to quickly um, let you guys know on the bottom of this uh, page, you will see a link and that's to my other channel, which is a Snoinsha Audio. On that channel, you'll see I do have uh, one video on negative energies, what and who are negative energies, how to recognize and remove. And also you will see an entire section there, a whole playlist regarding past life and spiritual connections. So please do have a look at that because for some of you who are truly feeling that this is an extremely intense connection, one that you've never felt in your entire life, and this person is just like one person that just totally has made your world like upside down. They've just turned your world upside down. Um, it's important for you to see from other people's perspectives because you'll see it in the comments how other people have gone through this too. You're not alone. It happens. And sometimes it happens simply for a life lesson that we learn from them. And sometimes this happens to us because we need to teach them a lesson. All right, Libra, that is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity and some guidance in your situations. I know this was a very lengthy reading, but I did want to go into detail um, in the end because I feel it's very important for some of you to be clear of this negative energy that's really bringing you down. All right, you all take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys again. Bye now.